Today I fucked up, by going on a date thinking it was a job interview. By sitting through an entire date thinking it's a job interview. So this happened in the past, 24 hours. I'm a 19 year old male making my way through college, and also work at a restaurant to make ends meet. Now you could consider me pretty smart except when it comes to social interactions, I can almost never pick up on little hints, such as flirting. So yesterday was a pretty slow day at the restaurant and this middle-aged lady, 35 to 40, came in, she was the only customer we had all day, and as such I decided I'd be extra friendly and have a real conversation with her. It's worth noting that she's very very attractive for her age, and she was very well kept as well. During the conversation she mentions that she runs a property management slash realtor business, and that she had just spent the day interviewing people for an assistant position she had open. But she hadn't found anyone worth hiring yet, then proceeds to ask me if I knew anyone looking for a job. Now I'm happy with my job, the money is decent, could be better earth sea, but I'd always wanted a desk job. So I told her I was actually thinking of looking for another job. She then proceeds to say that I look like the perfect young man for the job and that she would like to talk about it more when I wasn't at work. So we made plans to meet the next morning for coffee. Now here's where my idiocy really becomes clear. I'm not usually a morning person and the idea of an early morning interview had me nervous, so I made sure I woke up nice and early and got dressed looking real spiffy if I may say so. I show up to the cafe dressed formally with my resume in hand. And as soon as she spots me she greets me with a long deep hug. This is when I should have realized this wasn't a standard job interview. But clueless as I am I just figured oh she's friendly. We sat down and the conversation never once broached the subject of my skills, qualifications, or employment history. Instead she mainly steered the conversation towards personal stuff like what are my hobbies, shared stories about her life etc. This whole time I'm thinking, oh she already knows where I work, and she's probably just looking for someone whose personality matches hers. Because of course no one wants an assistant who doesn't get them. Da. Now by the time we were wrapping up, two hours had passed, and the whole time I'm thinking oh this interview is going really well. Then as we stood up to leave the cafe, she gave me one more hug, and said she really did enjoy our date and asked if I'd be interested in coming over tonight for dinner. I froze for a second, did she just say date? Panicking as if the job was still on the line I quickly said sure that sounds great boss with two thumbs up and a dumb smile on my face. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Edit, to answer all your questions, no I didn't sleep with her, yes she's very hot, turns out she's actually 52, no I won't be taking the job, yes I went over but because I didn't want to be a dick, I ended up explaining the misunderstanding she apologized and I left, she's tried texting me a couple times through the night, I still haven't responded. Too long didn't read, I went on and sat through an entire date thinking it was a job interview. Hashtag sure that sounds great boss. Good grief you had me rolling in laughter. Oh, my gosh thumbs up too. There's no way I could make this any more hilarious and awkward. What makes it worse is that I said it with two thumbs up looking like the Fonz OMG. To be fair it really did sound like an interview invitation she asked you out on. I half wonder if she did that on purpose to lure you in since you're so much younger. Men only want one thing and it's disgusting. Gainful employment. Anyone would have thought it was a job interview, you didn't do anything wrong. As a similarly aged woman I feel I should warn you that this lady sounds like a total loon. She knew she was misleading you into a date and now you will be at her house. If you want to sleep with her, great, that's clearly on the table, just know she may get possessive and needy, quick. You may want to weigh if it's worth it. And wear a condom, one you brought and one you put on your own dick. Wear a condom, one you brought and one you put on your own dick. Best advice I've ever heard. Edit, please, stop, giving me instructions on how to properly put a condom on. Had an opportunity to have a sugar mama who was very straight up about her proposition. She wanted me to live with her in her three-story house on the hill, she wanted me to be her cook slash fuck toy and would pay $600 a month and she claimed she had a 28-year-old woman living with her who took her up on the same offer as a maid. 
It sounded too good to be true so I passed on it but I've always wondered if she was legit being so upfront and all makes me feel like it could have easily gone either way. 600 a month is awful cheap for a live in cook. Today I fucked up by offering Doritos to a military police officer. This happened about 3 hours ago. Be me, 29 years old male, living in probably the most corrupted country in the world, Venezuela. So just to give you some background, Venezuela is in a very difficult situation, political and economical, the majority of us want to get rid of this corrupted government and we have elections in a few days so tension is palpable in the streets, police and military are corrupted as fuck, you can buy weapons such as grenades or submachine guns to them, etc etc, basically hate is in the air. So, I was in a traffic jam, one of the many we have daily when the hunger hit me, I had a big bag of Doritos in my car so I decided to eat, I have a gastric bypass and can't eat that much, I was eating with my window open when a motorcycle with two military officers, low rank, stand beside me waiting for their turn to pass, I see the guy in the back literally drooling looking at the Doritos so why not. I won't eat this much I offer him the bag and he didn't hesitate to take it with a very big smile and thanking me. 20 seconds later the shit storm. The driver next to me gets out of his car screaming you fucking thieves. Let the guy alone he have done nothing to you, he thought I was being blackmailed and I got asked for money inside the bag vish is one of many ways for them to get paid blackmailing you, I get out of the car to explain that it wasn't money but hell no, the military officer that was driving told me in not a such a pleasant way to stay inside the car that he could handle it. He gets down the bike and goes to the guy that was screaming baton in hand when all of a sudden no less than 20 people are surrounding him screaming thief. Oppressor. Go to hell and start punching him. Military number 2 gets Downey to help his friend and getting punched and screamed he managed to get military number 1 in the bike and proceed to drive as fast as he could. Everyone get to their cars and guy number 1 gets to me Doritos in hand here's your money. Now I have back my Doritos in my car and sadness in my heart for how deep this society has fallen. But I have half a bag of Doritos to eat in the traffic jam tomorrow and I have that going for me Vish is nice. Too long didn't read, two military officers got their ass kicked for a bag of Doritos I gift them. Edit, 3 for my bad English. Edit 2, wow we are the number 2 in the front page, I'm very glad you guys enjoyed my today I fucked up and at the same time I feel kind of sad because it is true. But still number 2 with half a bag of door. Corn chips with cheese flavor. Edit 3, the Venezuelan Doritos guy. Edit 4, THX to slash r slash rocket and Vertsfy for the heads up about a guy using my photo claiming him one of the terrorists on the Mali terrorist attack, original message hey there's a guy over slash r slash world news using your photo saying it's was a pic released by the police in the ongoing Mali terrorist attack. Here's the link, go there ASAP. If you guys could go there and report that guy I would gladly appreciate it. So what did we learn today? If you got problems with anybody in Venezuela, just give them a bag of Doritos and people will fuck them up. I had no problem with them. I would really love to know how they got to their barracks we got beated but please don't ask why. Would make a great Doritos commercial. I claim outdoor rights. Hey, want a Dorito? Motherfuckers. World War 3. Remember remember the 19th of November. The Doritos Treason and Plot. This is simultaneously the funniest and saddest thing I have heard in a long time. Edit, spelled simultaneously like a moron. Simultaneously. You are welcome to live here a few days XD. Gave his face a schoolum. Ever throw something and know the very instant it left your hand that the throw was good? Last week while being lazy, trying to nap like a good dad on duty should, I experienced just that. I heard a scream come from my four-year-old's room. I slothily carried myself to the commotion to find him in a pool of tears, screaming that his older brother had thrown a toy through the window from outside and hit him in the face. Pretty good throw I thought to myself as I peeked out the window, my adrenal glands, starting to kick some dust off. Child's name I yell, my smug little six-year-old is jogging across our field, trying to act inconspicuous. Do not throw toys at your brother. 
The following actions I took were inexplicable. I grabbed the small heart, H-A-R-D, plastic butterfly, perhaps out of frustration, or dad mode protection, and beamed it back out the window, in the general direction of my running six-year-old. Surely without the intent of hitting him, perhaps just to show my frustration. A million-year-old instinct to assert my dominance. I could never make a shot like that, not in a thousand tries. He was at least 40 meters away, running perpendicular to me, his smug, older brother face looking in my direction, as if I didn't know what he had done. I would never be able to beam a moving smug face like that, too many variables. By God as it rolled off the tip of my finger, I knew. It was good. I knew before it left my hand, I knew mid-stroke, hell, I knew before breakfast yesterday. My son was getting drilled. Before that toy left my fingers I saw police, handcuffs, search warrants. I saw my courtroom, a stern judge and an unforgiving jury. No posted bail. No commissary. A life sentence. Supervised visits in 20 years if I'm lucky. I saw my whole life pass me in an instant, I looked through the crowd for a friendly face, none to be found. Not even my best friend, my wife, was there to support me. I felt that throw for a lifetime. Fast forward a half a stroke and I knew. Jesus I knew. IT. Is. Good. Dot. The smell of the turf, the cheering crowd, the stadium lights. Last 10 seconds of the game, 3 points down on the 10 yard line. I spent all season playing catch on the sideline, waiting for the starter to get injured. Now was my shot. A Hail Mary, 80-yard play is our only chance. I beam the ball with all my might and I knew. I feel the outer body euphoria when you just know. The ball sails to its target, the crowd knows now too, they go wild, game over. Home team wins the championship. He knows as well. He knows better than I do. His life is over. In that split instant we had a conversation, he and I. Why dad? Why? Because? You don't? Throw toys. At your brother. Dot. Dad, I promise I'm sorry okay? Please don't do it daddy. Exclamation mark. It's too late for that son. I already pulled the trigger. You're done and you know it. Dot. His bottom lip trembles as he realizes I'm right. No more second chances. Game over. Dad wins. He's taking that plastic butterfly to the forehead, dead center, and nothing can change it. Three quarters throw and I'm in the VIP room later that evening, feet kicked up, sipping top shelf champagne, surrounded by teammates, close friends and women on either side. My post-game press conference is playing on the TV, along with the highlight reel. I laugh at how stupid I look in a suit. Who cares? I am the MVP. I'll be damned if I spend another season on the sidelines. They shall rue the day they sidelined me. It crosses my mind that I may have made the best throw I in history. I knew. Dot. A mile of airtime and whap. Dead center, kill shot. Chris Kyle slaps me on the back. Smug face wails and drops to the ground. Dead. Do not. Throw toys. At your brother. The flag is draped over me as I make my exit and return to my throne to nap. Suddenly several security guards come in through the beaded doorway, along with two police officers, all official and serious looking. The head of security approaches me, deep concern consumes his face. He hastily presents a cell phone to me, a hand over the receiver portion, to mask our words. Hey kid, remember that toy you threw? How could I forget? The whole world remembers. Well, your wife is on the phone, and she is not happy. I take the phone, although fear filled the room, I walked not in fear, she would understand. She too would love the MVP. Are you out of your friggin' mind? What did you do to Xandippus? Babe, babe, babe. Let me just say, I have an amazing story to tell you. Dot. Too long didn't read, threw a dense plastic toy a ridiculous distance in the direction of my kid. Gave his face a school on. Edit, sorry if you don't appreciate the writing style.
I wanted to create something that captured that special moment, I think this post has more context than anything I've ever written or read. Edit 2, update, due to popular demand, here's the rundown of the aftermath. It smoked him straight in the forehead, he dropped, he cried, and I felt terrible. I told my wife and she was really not too upset. It was the grey area between freak accident and awful parenting. I showed her this post and she laughed all the way through. She thought it was great. Of all the positive and negative feedback this received, hers was absolutely the most important to me. Anyways to the English majors and writers out there, I think you have to grasp that it's not a build up to climax, or even a carefully formulated storyline. More so a magnification of the euphoria felt when you make a decent throw. I wrote this in 30 minutes tops, without an agenda or writing staff. I had no clue it would grab so many experienced ears. I would go back and change it had I known it would blow up. Can't really do that now, as a major edit feels unethical. Thank you all for the kind words and positive feedback. I'll try harder next time. Also, I am not a writer. Wife's today I fucked up incoming. Today I drilled my husband with a frying pan. Dash. Edit. Wow, so many upvotes. Thank you. Do not. Throw toys. At your son. Obligatory oh my goodness too. 6k upvotes thank you all edit Lamau. Today your 6 year old FD up, by not catching a Hail Mary pass. In the UK, drilling someone in the face means something very, very different. I was worried where this story was gonna go. There's a very real chance this will be the most prominent childhood moment your six-year-old will look back on one day. Mainly because of the permanent memory loss, but also, you know, it was a sweet throw. Ops username and then the title of the post made me really scared for a second.